Hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to go sailing down a river. A boat's crew rowed 10, rowed 10 10.5 miles downstream with the current in 1.5 hours. The return trip upstream against the current covered the same distance but took 3.5 hours. Find the crew's rowing rate in still water and the rate of the current. Okay, we have to talk. If you take a boat or a raft out on a stream or river, <clears throat> the river's going to have a current running water, the, the way the water runs, and it, and it pushes you if you're rowing in the same direction as the current, or even if you have a motorboat. If you're going in the same direction as the current, you're going to go faster because the current is pushing you. On the other hand, if you go upstream against the current, upstream is what against the current is called, then your motor or your rowing speed you know, you're going to be rowing, your, your motor's going to be going, but the current is going to be working against you and slowing you down. So that's what this problem is saying. There's a boat with a rowing crew, and they rowed 10.5 miles downstream with the current pushing them, and it took them 1.5 hours. Then they turned around and went home. But that's against the current. So the current slowed them down, and it took them longer. <clears throat> now, we're asked to find the crew's rowing rate in still water. That means, uh, uh, that means neglect the current for a minute, because see, we want to consider the current separately. So what we normally do, what we usually do, is we use the letter X to represent the, the speed of the rowing or the speed of the boat. So let's call it rowing speed without the current. So that's what in still water means. Rowing speed all by itself. And then Y can be the speed of the current. So we're separating them. Okay, when you go upstream against the current, the speed of the current is, is going to slow you down. So we say x minus y for the rate of speed. Notice my little table I made here. If you look in the book, you'll see this same table. Distance equals rate times time. Okay, let me move this over a little bit. But x minus y is the speed of the rowing, the row speed, minus the current speed. When you go downstream with the current, the current speeds you up, so you go faster because you've got the rowing speed plus the current both in the same direction. Now, this says that they went 10.5 miles downstream and the return trip covered the same distance. So the boat travels 10.5 miles upstream and 10.5 miles downstream. The only difference is in the time. When they go upstream, it takes longer. So the bigger number is going to go in your upstream column for time. And your smaller number is going to go in the downstream column for time because when you go faster, it takes less time. Now this makes our two equations appear, but they look a little bit different because instead of adding, we're multiplying. So we're going to say distance equals rate times time. We're going to say 10.5 equals, now I, I, I would say x minus y times 3.5, but it's just easier to put the number in front of the parentheses. And I am going to put these in parentheses because this is one quantity composed of two inputs. You've got the speed of the, ro the, the rowing speed 
and you've got the current speed and they make up the total speed of the boat. So I'll have 3.5 times x minus y and I'll have 10.5 equals 1.5 times x plus y. And those are our two equations. Okay, I'm going to work this the basic way, even though there is a trick to make all of this go faster. I'm going to take the longer approach because it's more straightforward and it's good when you're just starting to do this kind of problem. Notice I'm distributing. That's really why I needed the parentheses. Okay, now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since I have one decimal place in each of these decimals, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 10 and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 10. And what that's going to give me, let me put a little arrow here, what that will give me is 105 equals 35x minus 35y and 105 equals 15x plus 15y. Now, we can decide what are we going to do. What are we going to do? Am I going to use substitution or am I going to use addition before you, uh, that is elimination, before you decide on elimination, let's just see if we can use substitution. Because, for instance, in this equation right here, if I could multiply everything by 15, uh, that is, divide everything by 15, I would get a really uh, easy uh, equation to use substitution on, to make my substitution equation. So let's come over to the calculator and see if 15 will go into 105. 105 divided by 15. Yes, it will. 7. So if I divide by 15, and I divide by 15, and I divide by 15, then what I'll get is 7 equals x plus y. Well, at this point, that kind of makes me wonder. I wonder if 35 will go into 105. Let's try. 105 divided by 35, enter. 3. Oh my goodness, I can divide this by 35, and this by 35, and this by 35, and I can get 3 equals x minus y. And look how easy that would be to use elimination on. Let's do it. If I add these two equations together, I'll get 10 equals 2x, and we'll have a minus y plus y, and those zero out. So I have 10 equals 2x. If I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 5, and that is, is it kilometers or miles? miles. So that means that x equals 5. Now I have to look back up here to remember what my x is. Ah, it's the rowing speed. So the rowing speed is going to be 5 miles per hour or 5 mph, which is what we're more familiar with in this country, miles per hour. Well, that's great. Now, let's use one of these equations to figure out what y is. Th 
3 equals, now, x minus y. I know what x is, right? I, I know that x is 5, so I'm going to say minus y. 5 minus y is, is 3. What is y? It's going to be 2, right? Because 5 minus 2 is 3. Or you could work that out algebraically. So now we know that the speed of the current is 2 miles per hour. And we can answer the question. And look at that. Our answers agree with the answers from um, my math lab. So we did it. We did it, gang. Congratulations. And we are done with the sample problems for the system applications.